Hey guys, it's uh, Marshall with you, and uh, in this new video series we're going to take a look at some of the changes in the Legends Quest plugin version 1.88. Uh, this version is has a lot of significant changes since the previous version. Um, I do believe the last version released before this one was 1.85. This one has quite a few changes, so I figured there would be a good idea to do a completely new video series on uh, the new features. Um, basic quests and typical quests that you may have seen in the past, they are still created the exact same way. Nothing has really changed. You can still do all those things that you used to do. Um, this video series is just going to go through the enhancements. So if you're brand new to the Legends Quest plugin, a lot of this may seem confusing in this video series. You may want to go back and look at the um, the, the, the older original uh, Quest plugin uh, tutorial videos. They'll show you the basics of the Quest plugin. Um, most of that stuff still applies even though you know we've we've come a ways with the plugin itself and there's new features and new changes but to get a general idea and a general understanding of how the quest plugin works you can uh, go back and look at those videos and all that still applies so what I've got here is a, just an empty module. Uh, it doesn't have any resources or anything in it. I just saved it. Uh, it doesn't even have an area in it. So um, what I'm going to do is, as usual, I'm going to import uh, the quest resources. So we'll do that. And now I have all my scripts and my conversations and everything that I need. So the first thing that I do is I'm going to run the master configurator. So we'll fire that up and we'll select configure and will activate the Quest plugin. And as usual, you do want um, a database uh, for questing, so we'll plug that in here. I'm just going to use my own uh, for this. So it's your MySQL NWNX database that you'll be using. Um, we'll just call this, uh, I believe I got one called testing, and I think I got a test user. Oops. Uh, let's try that. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I've set that up. Uh, I'm going to update my module scripts, and I don't have any areas yet, so I'm not going to update my area scripts. Okay, um, so some of the new features of the Quest plugin um, they come in two two flavors. One is some new advanced options, and another is uh, what we call the special effects plugin. So if we look closely at our plugins list, we're going to see the Legends Quest plugin, and after we install it, we're also going to see this Legends SE plugin. This Legends SE plugin stands for the Legends Special Effects plugin. It is uh, it goes hand in hand and is tied into the Quest plugin, but um, the reason why it's separate like this is because you can use it without quests. Okay, now we'll get into this one in a later video series because this one is a, is a whole um, feature all on its own. So um, don't be surprised when you see this new Legends SE plugin. It is a special effects plugin. It has dependencies on the Quest plugin, so you do need to have both installed, but you don't necessarily need to be using Legends Quest to make use of some of the cool features of the special effects plugin, and you'll see what I mean when we get into that part. But for this uh, tutorial series, we're going to just look at the new changes in the Quest plugin itself, and we'll get to these ones later. So we're going to fire this up and configure it. So we're going to go into File and Configure. And pretty much nothing has changed in here uh, since 1.85, so we're just going to hit Finish to save our configuration changes. And then we're going to compile all of our scripts. And make sure there's nothing red in our list here, and everything looks good. Yep, and I'll give her a quick save. And yes, we don't have any areas yet, so that's okay. So that's it. We're we're installed and ready to go. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is uh, create a new area, so we'll have some place to work. So we'll do that, and we'll just say, uh, oh, I don't know, um, uh, the firms is good enough. And uh, here's our area with our start location. So this is where we'll start off. Now, the part we're going to talk about here is the uh, advanced features of the Quest plugin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a quick little quest here to show some of the issues with the existing Quest plugin and why these advanced features exist. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that there's a pl uh, an NPC here, and we have to use our imaginations. I'm not going to build a big town and all that stuff. I'm just going to put the, the actors and the... Um, 
and the and the props and whatever we need for our quest down in this area just so you'll see it but you know in a real persistent world we'll, we'll build all this up uh, for this example what we're going to do is we're going to have an NPC standing here and that NPC is going to be looking for some help the NPC in question it has lost their necklace. Um, they believe it was stolen and want you to go and try and retrieve it. Um, and what you could do for this quest is they'll tell you, you know, go and have a look at where the NPC kept the necklace in, in their chest. And you can go and examine the chest looking for clues to try and get an idea on where the necklace might be. Maybe some tracks or, you know, maybe some some breadcrumbs that were left behind that'll give you an indication of where you should go to actually find the necklace and then what we'll have is we'll have um, a creature maybe a cobalt or something is actual little thief that stole the necklace and you go and you kill him and you get the necklace back okay it's pretty pretty simple pretty straightforward it's nothing nothing spectacular about that at all but um, what I want to demonstrate by doing this is just show some of the annoyances some of the things that annoy me um, with the quest plugin that I really felt needed to be addressed with it. So what we'll do is we'll create that quest and then we'll discuss um, what the problems are. Now you're going to see some new screens in here when we do this. Um, just ignore them for now so I'll discuss them later. So what we'll do is we'll look at this quest and we'll call it uh, Stolen Necklace and we'll just give 50 experience and 10 gold level 1 quest. And our new NPC we're just going to call her uh, Jane Smith and her post quest one liner is thanks for finding my necklace uh, her offer is hello there uh, adventurer I'm hoping you could help me if I throw a few coins your way and again this is just I'm just throwing this together real quick just to for filler um, uh, my necklace has been stolen and I really want it back okay pretty simple um, if you can find it for me I'd be willing to pay I kept it in a chest in my bedroom and I just know someone took it while I was out. Okay, you know, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, please take a, please, uh, please uh, examine my chest and see if you can determine, deter, deter, yeah, okay, let's try that, determine, <laughs> uh, where it went. Okay, so that's your indicator of what you should be doing next. Uh, quest reminder, please return my necklace. And our quick quest finisher here. Thank you so much. I just knew that nasty cobalt was trouble. Okay, you know, straightforward stuff. Uh, so now. Um, as you can see, it's it's pretty straightforward quest. There's nothing spectacular about this, and you know we we don't care about this text being so vague, but that's okay. Um, now, normally, what we would do is we would have two objectives. Our first objective would be uh, you know examine a placeable, uh, and that would be you know a clue that would um, that would say, oh yeah, you see some you know claw scratches and and you know small. Uh, footprints the, um, near the chest, uh, and that would give you an indicator that it was cobalt. Then your second objective would be defeat the cobalt and you know get the necklace, and that would be like a loot mob objective. Uh, so that would be our two objectives. Now we're just going to put them in like that as normal, uh, and then I'll describe what the issue is. So we'll add our first objective here, and it's going to be examine a place. Well, now you're going to see a whole bunch of new stuff in here, and this is what we're going to go through shortly. Um, the screen looks a little different, but the top half is still the same as it used to be, so that hasn't changed. All we've done is we've added new sections into the bottom of the objectives. So, first thing we're going to do is examine chest for clues, and we'll use an existing, and we'll just you know call it chest. Uh, you know, just a large chest, and I'll be examine one of those, and I'll say you discover some clues. Straightforward. And we'll finish that, and that's our first objective. Then we'll add our second objective, and that's going to be um, it's going to be loot a creature drop, 
and we're going to say uh, obtain necklace from cobalt. Okay, and we're going to say cobalt, and we'll create a copy of that, and we'll say uh, gold necklace. Uh, one, create a copy of that. So this is obtain a necklace from the cobalt, and uh, so we'll have a cobalt that will drop this necklace. Okay. Right away, here's where the problem comes in, and we and you know we'll finish this quest and we'll be done. This uh, all works and it works great. The problem is is that when you accept this quest, your journal will show you your two objectives because that's that's what the journal does is it'll show all of the objectives for your current NPC. So Jane Smith is the player's current NPC, and it shows all the objectives, giving the player uh, an idea of what they should do, and uh, normally, you know, if the, the player has to complete all their objectives in order to complete the quest, so the player has to go examine the chest for clues and then they have to go obtain the necklace from the cobalt. The downside of this is that there's no mystery to the quest. Uh, you immediately know where the necklace is as soon as you accept the quest because it's, sh it's listed in your objectives. You look at your objectives and you'll see, examine the chest for clues and obtain necklace from cobalt. It'll, it'll show you that. And in the past we've had to be a little creative with these objective descriptions in order to not give things away and you know even still it was still a little bit of a challenge the player always knew they had two things to do They're, they knew they never had three things they only have two things to do there's no mystery um, you know we can cover it up we can do tricks we can add multiple NPCs we could split it into two quests there's all kinds of things that you can do but it would be just nice to be able to have the ability to just make these objectives a little bit more mysterious you know not let the player know exactly what they have to do next uh, not let the player know what's coming up things like that that would be handy and that is where the advanced uh, features come into play so right away again the player has to complete both of these and it and in in the past it didn't even matter which order they did it in they could actually go and obtain the necklace from the cobalt go kill the cobalt get the necklace and then they could come back and examine the chest afterward and do things out of order and whatnot and kind of didn't really make sense for the quest so with that we can actually use the new enhanced features to be able to um, make the journal and these objectives behave differently and that is pretty much the biggest change in the quest plugin for version 1.88 is the handling and what we can do with these individual objectives so in an ideal situation what we would actually like to have happen is have the player accept this quest see that they have to examine the chest for clues but not even know this objective at all. They don't even know this objective exists. As far as they know, maybe she just misplaced it and it's actually in the chest. You don't know. The player, it would be nice the player doesn't know about this objective and, and they don't even see it. So what we can do is we can actually hide this objective and deactivate it from the quest until the player does this objective. How do we do that? Well, we can select this objective here and edit it. And if we look at our advanced features, we can see all kinds of new checkboxes and options. Now I'm going to go through some of these um, through this tutorial. The first one here, hide done notice. If you remember in your quest journal, whenever you complete an objective, you get a little green done in brackets after it whenever you complete the objectives. That will give you an idea of what ones you've done and what ones you haven't done. Uh, by turning this one on, when a player completes this particular objective, we, we can hide the fact that it shows the done. Like we may know consciously in our minds that yeah, we've done that objective, but we don't have to display it in the journal. Um, right away, that doesn't seem very valuable, but there are times when this can be valuable, and I'll get into that in another tutorial, but that's basically what that one does. It hides the word done in the journal. This one here is one we're after for this particular setup, hide self. So this means that when this um, NPC's quest is accepted or if we move on to a second NPC and we're going to start that NPC's objectives. This is basically at the beginning of the quest or at the beginning of meeting the NPC what objectives are first displayed. This one here will be hidden. So this means that when we uh, when we first accept this quest, obtain necklace from Cobalt will not even be visible in our journal. Player won't even know it's there. Now if we just have this like this, the player's objective is still active, which means the player could actually still go and do this. They just won't realize that they can because it's not going to be shown. We can use the next option called inactive to make this quest objective inactive as well. 
So the player comes along, they accept this quest, the only thing they see in their journal is examine the chest, but let's say they heard from a friend, they know about this quest, they know that they're supposed to get this cobalt and get the, uh, get the necklace. If they decide to skip that objective, you know, examine the chest and go straight for the cobalt, the cobalt will not drop the gold necklace. The necklace will not be available to the player because the objective is inactive. Okay, so that's what these two do. Uh, we're going to get into the rest of these in a minute, but that's pretty much all we need for this one. So we've made this objective unavailable at the time the player accepts the quest. So now the next question is, well, how do we make that objective available? How do we make it visible? How do we get it into the journal? Well, we've said that we want that objective to appear in a journal once the player finishes the examine chest for clues. So we can do that by editing this and that's where we come into these some of these other objectives. The first thing we want to do is after the player's finished examining the chest for clues, we want to hide it. So we can say hide self when done. This means that when the player completes this particular objective right here, the objective will get removed from their journal. It'll be it'll be done, but it won't be visible anymore. Okay? So that's what that means. And then of course the next question is, well, if we hide this objective, how do, what do we want to have happen? Well, we want the objective number two to actually be activated and we want it to be displayed. So what we can do is we can actually show objective on complete and activate objective on complete. The show objective and activate objective means that whatever objectives are listed here or checked here, those are ones that are going to be displayed if they were previously hidden and activated if they were previously deactivated once this objective is complete. So once the player examines the chest for clues, they have that objective done. Objective number two, which was, uh, you know, kill the cobalt and get the necklace, which, was, which we said was hidden, because we set that to hidden, it'll be displayed in the journal, and we set it to inactive, it then becomes active. Okay? That only happens when this one is complete. Okay? And that's pretty much the simple, simple version of it. So that's what some of those do. So now, like this, what we've got here is we've got a quest, we accept it, examine the chest for clues, the player goes over, they, they, they examine the chest for clues, they, uh, you know, they say, you, you see the little message, you discover some clues, great, you, you know, you still don't know what those clues are, uh, you just finish the objective and then discover some clues. Then your journal, you'll get a little message saying, you know, journal, up, journal objectives are updated, you check your journal and all of a sudden you'll see this obtained necklace from Cobalt. Okay, that makes the journal more useful and is and you know allows you to hide your objectives. And then even if you had a third and a fourth objective, you can you know chain them together. You can hide those ones. And then when the player you know completes uh, the obtained necklace from Cobalt, you could actually have you know objective three display and become active, or, or and or objective four and so on and so forth. So that's kind of handy like that. However, we could use a little bit more flavor here. You know, we're not really being very helpful to the player. So the player comes along, they examine the chest for clues, and all we're saying is you discover some clues. Okay, that's not, you know, overly useful. So if we could figure out uh, a way to make this uh, more interesting, we could do that. Now, the as we know, the Quest plugin requires the Legends Info plugin to be installed as well, because the Quest plugin does leverage it. We can use this right here, Objective Change Notice. Okay, now what objective change notice does is it allows us to give the player a whole bunch of text on their screen that will appear once this objective is finished and this is very useful for when a player completes an objective so that you want to get into a, a you know a very descriptive um, you know a very descriptive uh, action that's occurred when they complete this objective so for example you know you you have um, kill the demon at the end and uh, you want the player to you know get some more information other than you know you just kill the demon there, there should be some story or some things or some more information for the player to be able to use so this is what this one will, is for so what we'll do here is we'll actually fill this in and what we're going to type is uh, you examine the chest closely and notice small claw marks uh, along its edge as well as small cobalt size footprints nearby. There is no doubt in your mind a cobalt was in was 
poking at this chest. Okay, so this is flavor for your for your objective. So now the player comes along, they examine the chest for clues, and they get this whole big paragraph of text that'll appear in a pop-up box over here on the side of the screen. And when we go in and actually play this, you'll see it. A uh, pop-up box that describes all of this, uh, of what's happening. And that's like, oh, okay, now I know. There's a cobalt here. So they complete this quest. They say, oh, yeah, there's been a cobalt. Now I know who it is. Their objectives update. And all of a sudden now they have a new objective saying obtain the necklace from the cobalt, which they can go do. So now we've described a little bit of the advance. So why don't we just implement this quest? And uh, what we'll do, uh, I'm just going over here to my palettes, and I'm going to grab the, uh, and as you can see here, I'm just going to bring this blueprints over. Uh, here's my Legends Quest uh, category, uh, the Stolen Necklace Quest, here's Jane Smith, I'm just going to lay Jane Smith in again, you know, as we all know, the Quest plugin creates placeholders for everything, you have to tailor how you want these things to look yourself. Uh, that's Jane Smith, um, we're going to have our little Cobalt guy, who should be here, we'll have him like way over here, somewhere, I'm going to turn on the surface mesh so I can see, oops, I haven't baked yet. Uh, we'll just have the cobalt wandering around over here somewhere. And I'm just going to quickly change his perception to short. I don't want him come chasing me and stuff. Uh, so, perception. I want your perception range to be short. Okay. That's our cobalt. And of course, we need our little chest. So, Jane Smith is going to say, hey, can you go check our little que uh, chest? So, we'll need the placeables. Uh, quest placeable, stolen necklace, and the chest. So this is the chest that you have to examine. Okay. And we'll put our blueprints back. And that's it. This quest is implemented. So, uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we'll, well, I'm going to bake my area here. And uh, what I'll do is I'm going to take this uh, little module and I'm going to throw it up on a server and log in and, and show you how it works. So, uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back in game now, um, and uh, as you can see, here's our little Jane Smith uh, character NPC with a quest waiting for us, our chest, and over here is our little cobalt. So, uh, we have no quests in our journal, and we're going to go talk to Jane Smith. So, pretty standard stuff, nothing unusual or different from before. Uh, hello there, adventurer. I'm hoping you could help me uh, if I throw a few coins your way. So, pretty much all the text that we wrote in the, uh, in the plugin. Uh, and, of course, you know, the clue, please examine my chest and see if you can determine where it went. Now, right away, you'll notice the first difference um, in this version. The only objective that's showing up in the offer is the examine chest for clues. The uh, obtain the necklace from the cobalt is not listed here. So that's that uh, hide and not active uh, function in the advanced options that's uh, doing that. So we'll accept this quest and we'll bring up our journal. We'll see the stolen necklace uh, quest and we'll see just the one um, objective. Even though we know there's two objectives in this quest, the player is only going to see one. So what we'll do is we'll go over and we'll examine the chest and search for clues. So we'll do that, examining chest. And we're going to see some new things up here. The first thing you'll see, you discover some clues, one of one, and objectives of data. This one of one, make a note of that, because I'm going to show you a trick about that in a little bit. But you've seen that we saw a red message saying objectives uh, updated. So that gives us an indicator that, hey, our journal has been changed. And of course, our extra information box uh, has appeared over here. You examine the chest closely and notice small claw marks along its edge, as well as smaller cobalt-sized footprints nearby. There is no doubt in your mind a cobalt was poking at this chest. So that gives us a clue. Hey, uh, we've examined this chest, and we, we got a pretty good idea it was a cobalt. Uh, of course, we did get that red message saying our journal objectives are updated, so we'll go back and look at our journal. And what we'll see now is that our objectives have changed. Uh, no longer do we see examine the chest. We now see obtain the necklace from the cobalt. So now we're seeing objective number two. It was activated when we uh, got this chest. So what we'll do next is uh, go and uh, see if we can uh, get our necklace from this cobalt. So I'm just going to quickly dispatch him Play here. Better launch two just in case. Yeah. There we go. So he dies and we uh, get the quest remain, so we'll go over and uh, examine that, search through, uh, search through his remains.
And as usual, the uh, found gold necklace, which is just a regular loot drop from him. We'll check our journal, and we'll see that our journal entry is now done. So as you can see, by using a couple of those advanced objectives, we can make the objective listings in our journals a little bit more mysterious. The player no longer knows exactly how many they have to do. And also, we can control uh, which objectives the player does first. If we only display the first objective first, and then we display the second objective next, and the third objective next, we can actually control the order in which players perform these objectives. Now. Uh, don't be misled to think that you still have to do them in order from 1 to 10. You don't actually have to do that. You can start with objective 1 and make the player do objective 3 next or make the player do objective 6 and then come back and do objective 2 so you can mix it up any way you like. And that uh, you know, opens up a, a few possibilities that we're going to get into a little later. So now we can go and turn this quest in as usual, finish it, get some rewards, and the quest is now done. So uh, that gives you an idea of how you can uh, you can work that. Now, as I said before, if we accepted this quest from this guy, we ignored this chest and went straight to the Cobalt and defeated him, we would loot his quest remains, but we would not find that necklace because the objective is not active. Now, we can do something a little different here and I'm going to go back into the tool set and, and show you how we can actually change this quest up to behave a little differently with some of the other options. So we're going to go back into the tool set now and talk about those.